Just hours after Joe Masseria was murdered, Charlie Luciano held a meeting at his home. One of the men he met with and had a message for was the rarely discussed yet influential mobster Vincenzo Troia. Let's check him out. Welcome to OC Shorts, bringing you detailed historical snapshots of the American Mafia and other organised crime. Feel free to subscribe if you like that sort of thing. Today, we're going to take a quick look at the powerful mobster Vincenzo Troia. On April the 15th, 1931, crime boss Joe Masseria was gunned down in a Coney Island restaurant. Hours later, Charlie Luciano, the man believed to have been the architect behind Masseria's killing, held a meeting at his home with Vincenzo Troia, a man who was associated with Masseria's main rival, Salvatore Maranzano. An FBI file based on information from journeyman mobster Nicola Gentile states, Lucky Luciano at his home met with Vincenzo Troia and told him to go to his compare Maranzano with a message to the effect that we have killed Masseria for our own personal reasons, not to serve him. Threatening a war to the end should Maranzano harm even a personal enemy of ours and demanding that Maranzano accept as a meeting place within 24 hours a locality designated by us. Luciano clearly stating that he arranged Masseria's death for his own reasons and not on behalf of Maranzano, a message that Vincenzo Troia was to deliver. So who was the rarely discussed Vincenzo Troia? Vincenzo Big Vince Troia was born on October 27th, 1887 in San Giuseppe Iato, a village near Palermo, Sicily. It is believed his parents were Benedetto Troia and Rosalie Constanza. Vincenzo Troia would marry Rosaria Ruffino on July 28, 1907. Some sources state that by 1918, Vincenzo Troia had become the mafia boss of San Giuseppe Iato. Although this is up for debate, as some believe that Troia's cousin, Antonio Pileo, was the boss. In 1925, Troia illegally entered the United States, with sources indicating that he did so disguised as a monk. It is said that Vincenzo Troia left his two brothers in charge of San Giuseppe Iato whilst he was in America. In the United States, Troia would surface in Rockford, Illinois. In Rockford, Big Vince Troia would operate under the alias of Lorenzo Salvatore. Some sources state he was seen as an advisor to Antonio Tony Musso, a mobster who was on the rise in Rockford. In 1927, he was charged with the kidnapping of bootlegger Ezra Duffy, who was from Dixon, Illinois. In 1929, it appears that he was arrested on a murder charge after shooting Joe Gelosi and his two-year-old son, Frank. Joe Gelosi was labelled the King of Bootleggers in Madison. One newspaper reported, Vincent Troyer, known in Rockford, Illinois as Lorenzo Salvato, and Charles Guadera, Madison, were in custody today for investigation in connection with the shooting to death of the three-year-old son of Joe Gelosi and the serious wounding of the father in Madison's bush section Sunday night. Gelosi was injured and his son Frankie killed when they were shot from ambush as the father carried his son from the garage to the house. They had just returned from a trip in their car to a gasoline station, put the car in the garage and, as they were about to approach the door of the house, heard the gun bark behind them. The three-year-old boy was leaning over his father's shoulder and therefore got more of the shotgun slugs than Gelosi. On August 16th, 1930, a residence that Troy was staying at was shot up by mobsters associated with the Giovingo brothers. The Giovingo brothers were rivals to Antonio Musso and Vincent Troia. Troyer had actually left Rockford several days before the shooting. It appears from the account of Nicola Gentile that Vincenzo Troyer's position as a boss back in Sicily carried serious weight in the United States. And at some point, Troyer turns up in New York, where he is often associated with Salvatore Maranzano during the Catanorese War against Joe Masseria. In December 1930, due to the violence of the so-called Catanorese War, the Mafia Grand Council removed Joe Masseria from the position of Boss of Bosses and replaced him with Boston-based mobster Gaspar Messina, as reported in the following FBI file. During December 1930, 
the Rappresentante of Honorata Societa convened an assembly in Boston, Massachusetts, at which Gaspar Messina was provisionally elected Capo di Capi, and a commission with the authority to approach Maranzano to end the existing state of war was formed, consisting of Giuseppe Trena, a.k.a. Lou Vidanu, the peasant, Vincenzo Troia, Toto Le Verde, Salvatore Mangaratina, Nicola Gentile, and Peppino Siracusa. This committee went to New York, where they took residence at the Hotel Pennsylvania, reserving 10 rooms and a drawing room. This committee's authorization by the Boston Assembly of Rappresentante was to end the war and to guarantee peace, promising to elect a new Cape di Capi, and should Messeria provoke a disturbance of the peace, he and his family would be exterminated. The Committee for Peace, which Vincenzo Troia was part of, would meet with Maranzano in an attempt to end the war. An FBI file states, Maranzano finally consented to talk with the committee, who were picked up and brought to a meeting place where Maranzano and about 90 of his followers were waiting, all heavily armed. Having informed Maranzano of their authorization, the committee was detained by him for four days, during which he regaled the committee and his followers with events that had been peaceably settled during the previous 20 years, in an attempt to sway the committee to his side. Another General Assembly in New York was held in a room with a capacity for 300 people. 150 of these were Maranzano's followers. Maranzano became quite heated at the meeting, only to be calmed down by Vincenzo Troia. The FBI file states, Vincenzo Troia, a known compare of Maranzano, convinced Maranzano to reconvene the meeting. Ultimately, Joe the Boss Masseria was murdered. And, as mentioned earlier, Vincenzo Troia met with Charlie Luciano to take a message to Maranzano. Another General Assembly was held, this time in Chicago. It is here that Maranzano would seek to be the new boss of bosses. But he was not without opposition. As one FBI file reads, At the meeting in Chicago, some representante recalling the evils of Masseria's dictatorial rule as Capo di Capi, proposed a commission of six members to rule as Capi di Capi. Vincenzo Troia was selected to form this commission. Maranzano plotted against this idea and the selection of Troia, resulting in his own designation by the members as Capo di Capi. As can be seen from these files, Vincenzo Troia was a respected mobster who was influential in Cosa Nostra in the United States. After 1931, Vincenzo Big Vince Troia surfaced yet again in Rockford in 1934, where he is arrested with Frank Longo of Springfield, Illinois, and Phil Picuro of Beloit, Wisconsin. Interestingly though, at the time of this arrest in Rockford, Illinois, Vincenzo Troia gave his address as 365 North 7th Street, Newark, New Jersey. It is speculated that Vincenzo Troia was trying to muscle in on New Jersey territory. As stated in one FBI file, Vincenzo Troia organized a scheme to assume command of the Borgata in which he was a member, forcing out the legitimate representante of New York, New Jersey, Gaspar D'Amico, a native of Via Ambate, Palermo, Sicily. Troia assumed the power assisted by his son and reaped great profits from a business he opened. To prevent a reaction by D'Amico, Troia sent a squad of his men to D'Amico's macaroni factory to kill D'Amico, but D'Amico's father, shielding his son from the machine guns, was killed instead. Gaspar D'Amico disappeared after this loss. However, this appears to be inaccurate as this attack on D'Amico and his father actually happened after Vincenzo Troia died. Which brings us to the 22nd of August 1935, when Vincenzo Troia is gunned down in a massacre in New Jersey. As one newspaper reported, three gunmen with a new technique of mass murder, the concentration of drum fire or pistol bullets made a shambles yesterday of a candy shop in the heart of Newark's Little Italy of five men trapped by the precision slayers at South 6th Street and 15th Avenue, two died instantly, the other three were badly wounded, and one, Joseph Troyer, 25, 
was reported near death last night in Newark City Hospital. Troy's execution, because of a liquor feud dating from Prohibition days, is believed by police to have been the objection of the gangsters, who leapt suddenly from a black sedan and charged to the door of the candy shop in single file. The leading torpedo, a two gunman, blazed away with both automatics. When they were empty, he stepped swiftly aside and the man behind continued the barrage. Then he too leapt away and the third killer finished the job. Vincenzo Troyer, 45, doomed Detective Say because he was the father of Joseph Troyer, slumped dead over a basket of peaches he had been peeling behind the counter. Three bullets tore his heart. Joseph Troyer fell with slugs in his abdomen and left shoulder. Having downed them, police believe the invaders kept on shooting to wipe out all witnesses. They killed Frank Longo, 45, and wounded Joseph Benevetto, 41, and Anthony Cesaro, 39, clerk in charge of the store. The FBI state that Vincenzo Troyer was killed for trying to muscle in on the lottery racket in Newark. But this is open to debate, and his murder remains a mystery to many historians. I hope you found that interesting. Thanks for watching.